الحمد للہ و صلاۃ وسلام علی نبی محمد ولا علی و صحبی وسلم اما بحبت فلّہ The sunnah in all of its manifestations are khaya. And this is a reminder for myself and my brothers and sisters. The sunnah lem yati illil bi khaya. The sunnah doesn't come except with good. That is something imaniya. That's a qaida imaniya. That's a part of your faith, part of your iman. Because once you doubt that, you can compromise any and everything. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala with all of his infinite grace, mercy, and favor, forgive us of our many, many sins. Ameen, Ya Rabbil Alameen. And being meticulous about the sunnah is something I want to encourage myself to do and my brothers and sisters to do. And may Allah grant us tawfiq. And in a hadith that was narrated from Arwa bin Zubair that Abdullah bin Zubair told him that a man from the Ansar had a dispute with Zubair in the presence of the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wasallam concerning a stream in the Hera, Hera which they used to irrigate the, uh, the date palm trees. The Ansari said, let the water flow, but Zubair refused. So they referred that dispute to the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wasallam, who said, irrigate your land, O Zubair, and then let the water flow to your neighbor. The Ansari became angry and said, O Messenger of Allah, is it because he is your cousin? The face of the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wasallam changed color due to anger. And he said, O Zubair, irrigate your land, then block the water until it flows back to the walls around the date palm trees. Zubair said, By Allah, I think that this verse was revealed concerning this matter. But know by your Lord they can have no faith until they make you the judge in all disputes between them and find in themselves no resistance against your decisions and accept them with full submission. Ahabatifillah, this is a sound hadith in Sunan ibn Majah. And this hadith shows us that the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam didn't speak from his desires. And it shows us also the importance of accepting the Sunnah. We don't have, we're not in the living in the time of the Sahaba where we can discuss and ask and question and ask for further clarifications about matters. But rather we just have the Sunnah, that which is authentic to reflect upon and to try to understand and to try to implement and practice. That's what we have. So for us, accepting that which the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam called to and told us to follow because that is all that's truthful requires our submission. And that is practicing the sunnah of the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam even if it goes against our desires, even if our inclinations are towards something else, that we have to follow the sunnah, we have to follow what the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam uh, said and did and acted in the various ways in which uh, it requires for us to practice the sunnah of the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. It was narrated from Ibn Umar radiallahu ta'ala anhu. This is a hadith also in Ibn Majah, Sunan Ibn Majah, it's a Sahih hadith. Qala hadathana Muhammad ibn Yahya al-Naysaburi. Qala hadathana Abdur al-Zaq. Anba'ana Ma'mar. An Zuhri. An Salam. An Ibn Umar radiallahu ta'ala anhu. Anna Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam aqal. La tamna'u إما الله أن يصلينا في المسجد فقال ابن فقال ابن له إن لل إن لنمنع عنهن فقال فغضب غضبا شديدا وقال إني أحدثك عن رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم 
وإنك تقول إن لنمنع لنمنعهن in this hadith of the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam it was narrated that Ibn Umar radiallahu ta'ala anhuma said that the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said do not prevent the female slaves of Allah from praying in the masjid a son of his said we will indeed prevent them he got very angry and said I tell you a hadith from the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and you say we will indeed uh, prevent them? So it shows us, ahabatifillah, again, the importance of adhering to the sunnah of the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, even if it goes against our cultural practices, even if we think, for example, in many Muslim countries, they have certain practices, even if they, they want it for khair or they say it's for maslaha, but the asal of the sunnah may go against that practice. And in this hadith, we see that it's not permissible unless there is complete maslaha, you know, out of fear for harm for the women and, and what have you, or fitna for them, that you should not prohibit them from going to the masjid. Because think about it, when you have a society where the women don't even, can't go to the masjid to seek knowledge, they can't be in, have that sisterhood. What are you going to have? We have this problem all over. We have it in the Muslim lands, as I've lived in many countries. We have it, for example, certain Muslim countries, the masajid are always locked. And you may be out with your wife. And she has no place to pray. And there is a female side. Why not keep those places open for the women all day? As they are, at least during the prayer time, they should be stringent. Even though there may be few women that go out, but it still is better. And it gives the women a positive place to congregate. And perhaps a place to seek knowledge. Likewise, we need that. Look at the importance of the masjid in non-Muslim lands. Because everything you go, your, your workplace, everywhere you are... You're not being reminded of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You're not being reminded of the sunnah of the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So you need, the, for the males, that masjid. That's where you meet business partners. That's where you conduct business outside of that place. It's where you know the health of and well-being of your brothers and sisters. It's where you make relationships, where marriages and agreements are formed. The whole community, communal affairs, they're coming from the masjid in a vibrant community. Likewise, that's the case for the women and the knowledge as well. So it's imperative for us to understand the role of the masjid. And going back to the shahid of this hadith, is it shows us that we cannot put forth our own desires and our own culture and our own habits over the sunnah of the Messenger of Allah that takes precedence over all of those things. That doesn't mean we don't have cultures. That doesn't mean we don't have uh, other things and we just get rid of everything left. But it means that those things, if they contradict the, the Quran and the Sunnah, then we discard them. If they are uh, uh, in opposition to them and we don't give precedence to those things over the Sunnah of the Messenger of Allah, Sallallahu alayhi wasallam. And I ask Allah the Almighty to accept my good and forgive my evil. Anything I said that was correct was from Allah Azza wa Jal. Anything I said that was incorrect was from myself and the Shaitan. Wa sallallahu wa sallam ala Nabi and Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam.